I feel myself coming down with something. And so we have got a Condest Away tea to let us hope that this can expel whatever's residing in my body because this is not great. Greetings and salutations, my friends. I love that at this point that has become my new intro for the videos because I don't know how else to start it. It feels awkward. Hi, friends. Welcome back to the channel. It just doesn't feel quite right. So I have been making different lists for the start of year from my anticipated book releases all the way to the best books I read last year to my most disappointing, my most surprising. And I thought I'd make a list on the top 10 books. Only 10 because I cannot fathom the idea of doing the 24 books to read in 2024. These numbers keep getting higher and I just have to keep it realistic. Every year I'm reading less and so saying that I'm going to read these specific 24 books is unrealistic. So we're going to do top 10 books that I want to read in 2024. The only rule I like to set for myself is that these books cannot be a second book or a third book in a series. Don't ask me why, it just doesn't feel quite right to include sequels in this video and so I am doing only first installments or standalone books that I want to read this upcoming year. This year I did lower my goal to 52 books this year just so that I could average a book a week. If I read more than that's fantastic but I think at this point 52 books a year is a lot more realistic. Out of those 52 books could these 10 be a possibility? I feel like that's more realistic than saying ha. So let's get right into those 10 books that I want to read in 2024. I quite love this list. I think I say this every year but I do think out of every list I have made this is the one I'm most excited about but I really do mean that this time I promise. I promise. And I think there's a common thread with all of these books or at least the majority of them seem quite cozy to me. Even in the high stakes, even in the crazy things happening in these books, they all kind of scream a kickback with a nice blanket, with a nice candle, maybe a cup of coffee or tea. It's just, I don't know, there's just a specific vibe about these books. And the very first book that I've got on my top 10 list for 2024 is The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Sangu Mandana. I've owned this book for a hot second now, and I've heard everyone and their mothers rave about this book. People that have read this book all have amazing things to say. This is the cosiest book they have read. The romance was fantastic. The found family aspect was incredible. And I want to know what that that's all about because if there is anything I continuously need in my life, it's cozy, warm, feel-good vibes, and I feel like this book is going to provide them for me. So in this one, we follow Min Moon, who was orphaned from a very young age. Her parents died quite early on, and at the start of the book, she is moving to Britain, so a completely new place for her. And if she knows anything, is that she has got to keep her powers hidden. She has got to keep herself away from other witches so that their fellow magics don't mingle. I bet something catastrophic happens, maybe. If if they do and she's been doing very well with it except that she then gets a mysterious letter requesting her presence at nowhere house so that she can train three different witches because they need to learn how to control their powers and so against every bit of common sense she goes to nowhere house and she gets entangled with not only the three witches but everyone else residing in this house as well as well as Jamie the librarian of nowhere house who she will potentially strike up a romance with and it is inconvenient for the both of them and I just think this sounds like a good time and I cannot wait to read at this point both of Sangu's books because one of the Lou Fantasma picks for Patreon, one of the book clubs I run over there with Liv, one of the book club picks for later on in the year is Sangu's newest release for this year, A Witch's Guide to Magical Innkeeping. So if all goes well this year I may be reading both of this author's works and I think that would be a great time. Going along with the cozy theme and I'm pretty sure this book has been in another one of my lists that I did not end up getting to but that is the Thursday Murder Club. And I think 2024 is finally the year to read this. And in this particular series, because I do believe it's a series featuring the same character, just different cases, we are set in a retirement village following four unlikely friends who meet up on a weekly basis to solve jigsaw puzzles and look at unsolved crimes, pitch in and solve these murders all on their own. And one day things get extra exciting for these retired citizens because they find a dead body. I think it's from a journalist or a photographer. A local developer is found dead with a mysterious photograph and they take it upon themselves to solve this case <laughs> even though they definitely should not but with their expertise maybe they will and just based on the facts that this is a series I bet the solving the murder goes really well. There's something about this that's kind of giving off only murders in the building vibes which I've got nothing to base myself off on. They also don't live in a building. I don't know who the Mabel character would be. I don't think there's one but there's just something. <laughs> 
<laughs> about the senior citizen solving a crime. I am sorry to report that this book is making another list and I am sorry to report that because I have been terrible at actually getting this book finished and so once more in the hopes of actually finishing the fifth season this year I am putting it in my top 10 books to read in 2024 because it still has the bookmark in here and I'm quite enjoying it but I have not picked it back up in a while. The writing is super intriguing so far. It's written in second person which is very unlike anything else I've ever read before and then on top of that it features elemental magic which I absolutely love reading about and I know we follow a mother on the journey to avenging her two children after the world has ended once more. It's something that has happened before and this one is also prophesized it was set to happen so it is not a surprise and we go from there. I have heard all kinds of things about the fifth season from people really not understanding the magic system and feeling like they are beneath N.K. Jemisin's writing all the way to people absolutely raving about this because it's one of their all-time favorite books. I need this in my life. I feel like I am lacking. There is a fifth season sized hole in my heart and it is ready to be filled up. That sounds bad. That sounds, that sounds erroneous. So hopefully we read that this year. <laughs> if you've been watching my videos for a few months, then you'd also know that this book was in the safety pile in my TBR card for a hot second. Never got around to it because I never really included it in the TBR. And yet I definitely want to read it this year for shorties, for shorties, because I need some good sapphics in my life. And that is written in the stars by Alexandria Belfior. I am so ready for this book. It is said to be a Pride and Prejudice with a twist and I am ready for it. Anything that's considered modern day Pride and Prejudice, grumpy, intellectual, sunshine, all those things, that hand clench, I need those vibes in my life, especially coming from the suffix. I would say I personally desperately need that. And in this one, we follow Elle, who is a super famous astrologer. She has gone viral on Twitter several different times on her page, Oh My Stars, and she is yearning for that happily ever after for her soulmate to come down from heaven, whisk her away, and absolutely sweep her off her feet. But she knows that if there is ever anybody to partner with. It is not Darcy, who is too analytical, that's just here to function on the everyday things very methodically, and who doesn't really seem to enjoy romance like Elle does. However, one day Darcy's brother approaches Elle, and he's like, hey, I'm so happy you guys hit it off. This is fantastic. And she goes, I'm sorry, what? I don't remember us hitting it off. Uh, I actually pretty much remember that I do not want anything to do with this bitch. And Miss Elle takes takes full advantage of the situation because she just decides to go along with it and they start this fake dating dynamic. And so I'm excited to see all of the vibes. I'm excited to see the dynamic. I want those hand clench vibes. So I hope that Alexandria Belfler will really deliver with this one. If people's opinions are anything to go by, I think she really will because I have not heard a single negative thing about Written in the Stars. Listen, I was recently gifted this book for our Citadel yearly Patreon Secret Santa and I want to read this book desperately because I am not ashamed to admit, okay? We do not kink shame in this household. Sometimes we might, but that is not the point. I love Fast and Furious, okay? It's the Latina cliche, pero esa es mi familia, señores. Coño carajo que nos vamos. I may be a bit ashamed of admitting that I have read Fast and Furious fan fiction. I will not disclose of who or with whom. All I know is that I've, I've done it several times since the age of whopping 13. Anything that has got to do with fast cars and the romance Sign me up. Throttled by Lauren Asher is on my list of books to read in 2024 because why would I not want to read a Formula One romance? Now, I know certain people have said in the past, Mel, just skip book one, go straight into book two. I need to experience the first one. I need to experience the origin story. I need to see what this is about. And if you ask me, apparently the characters' names are Maya and Noah. I don't know anything about this. I don't know how they meet, how they chance upon each other, how they get together, if it's fake dating or not. It's her brother's teammate, apparently, somebody who disguises themselves as the villain. And aside from that, I've got no idea. <laughs> I want to keep reading the back. It sounds intriguing, but I'm just hoping this is a good one. This may be the first Lauren Asher I ever read, and I'm hoping that she leaves a good first impression. If not, and if all else fails, I do own the fine print by Lauren Asher. It's finally time. <laughs> Oh! <laughs>
Anytime I look at this book, I feel like crying. I'm also hormonal because I'm on my period. So please excuse me because I'm getting emotional just thinking about Radio Silence by Alice Oseman. I have owned this book for quite literally ages. It's been a handful of years since I've owned this and I have not read this. I really desperately want to do it in 2024. It's what initially sparked my curiosity about Alice Oseman because before I even heard of Heartstopper, Radio Silence was making all the rounds and then I ended up reading Heartstopper Stopper first and then I read Nick and Charlie and aside from the Heart Stopper saga I have not really gone deep into the Alice Oseman backlist and so I think it's high time that we do it in 2024 and I know that in this one we follow Frances who is quite literally super focused on college she wants no distractions she is very much focused on getting her degree and creating fan art for her favorite podcast university city on the flip side we've got I can never remember if it's Aled or Aled but we have got him on the flip side as the creator and host of University City. And he reaches out to Francis in an effort to collaborate. And they end up spending an entire summer together doing this really beautiful thing amongst themselves. However, things may turn risky and the future of this thing becomes risky once there are events threatening to unmask who the creator is of University City. And it puts everything Francis knows under question. And what I really, really adore about this book already, having not even read this yet, is this very first page. I have read this countless times and yet I have never fully felt ready to read this book because I feel like it's going to hit quite hard. But this says, hello, I hope somebody is listening. I'm sending out this call via radio signal, long outdated, I know, but perhaps one of the few methods of communication the city has forgotten to monitor in a dark and desperate cry for help. Things in University City are not what they seem. I cannot tell you who I am. Please just call me radio radio silence. I am, after all, only a voice on a radio, and there may not be anyone listening. I wonder, if nobody is listening to my voice, am I making any sound at all? <laughs> it really is that bit that makes me want to cry, and I cannot cry because I've got makeup on, but I swear to god my hormones are going crazy this period, and I... <laughs> need to just let go of this book, but I am gonna read it in 2024. Sweet Bean Paste is another one that I'm including on my list for 2024. I feel like I didn't read enough translated fiction this year, and I really want to get back into it in 2024. I really love it. I feel like the stories that are provided through translated fiction are completely different to what I typically consume that is traditionally published in the US or the UK, and I absolutely love them, and so I'm including this one on the list. And in this one, we follow Sentaro, who believes that he has failed at life, he has got a criminal record, he is drinking his days away, and he feels like there is really nothing to look forward to, and he spends his days making durayaki every single day, which is a type of pancake that is filled with sweet bean paste. And then Tokue arrives one day to stir up his life. She also has a troubled past, she is an elderly woman, and she makes the best sweet bean paste that he has ever tasted in his life. And then an unlikely friend is struck between these two people and the book goes from there. It seems to be very slice of life, very much a life lesson for both of these characters, and I've got a feeling that I'm also going to cry with this one, but I'm hoping I end up loving it. Friends, I am also going to include Nevermore for this year's yearly TBR. I am very, very excited about Nevermore this year. I feel like it's finally time to read this. I have owned this at this point for nearly four years, and I have yet to read it, but I think I of every middle grade I have heard of during my time on booktube, this has got to be one of the best reviewed ones and it is still not on my arsenal of books read and so we need to change that this year. It is a mission and this book sets up with Morgan Crow being cursed and she is said to be cursed because she was born on Eventide which means that every single misfortune happening around her in the town that she lives in is attributed to her being born on Eventide. And then Morrigan's life changes, maybe for the better, maybe not so much, when a man by the name of Juniper North arrives to whisk her away to a city called Nevermore where she'll have to face a set of trials alongside hundreds of other children. And if she doesn't win, then she'll meet her deadly fate. I don't know why that is. I'm sure she has got some sort of massive power that people do not want her to discover. I can't remember also how many books this series has so far, but I think it's around 
on four or five books so far. I desperately wanted to read this book as soon as I got my greedy little hands on it, and yet I did not read it in 2023, and so I'm rolling it over on my yearly TBR because it needs to happen. I absolutely loved book one. I can't not read this book in 2024, and that is Painted Devils. The first book of the series is Little Thieves, however, each of these installments stands on its own, I believe. Both of these books follow different plot lines because the plot line from book one was resolved in book one. In that first installment, we follow Vanya, who is impersonating the princess of the land she lives in. And so as a thief and as an impersonator, she hides very, very well. And because of it, she is cursed by the gods, the deities. And if she doesn't do what they're asking of her, then she will die at the end of the countdown. And on top of all that, there there is a detective that is on her toes because he is onto her and her impersonation of the princess and it becomes a game of cat and mouse between the two of them and that is also the love interest of the first book. It's got demisexual rep which I absolutely love and so I can't wait to read a book two because book one kind of ends on this note of wherever you go I will follow and I will make sure to catch you and there is just something about that that to me is so attractive and so appealing. It also definitely doesn't hurt that this book is not hard on the the eyes. In fact, these naked hardbacks are probably the most stunning I have ever seen. And I genuinely have no idea what the second book establishes as a plot line. Oh, Vanya Schmidt wasn't trying to start a cult was not what I was thinking this was going to be about. And the last book on my list is Throne of the Fallen by Kiri Maniscalco, another book I did not get to in 2023, but I will certainly get to it this year because there is just something about the Kingdom of the Wicked series that still appeals to me, even though I I did not. I did not enjoy book two. I feel like this is Carrie Maniscalco's redemption in the making. Well, in the making because I haven't read it, but it's definitely made. It's tangible. It's in my hands. I can touch it. I'm very excited to read Throne of the Fallen this year. This is the Barnes & Noble edition because I refused to buy the, the black cover, the ugly cover. I was not gonna do that to myself. In this one, we get Envy, and the book starts out with him receiving this very mysterious letter about a deadly game that has just started, and his only hope at traversing this game is Miss Antonia, I think her name is. Camila Antonius, I was not wrong about the Antonia. And things go from there. I don't know the specifics of everything. I'm trying to keep it that way. Trying to walk into this with zero expectations, especially because of my experience with Kingdom of the Cursed. And so trying to keep an open mind, trying to keep the brainsies open, and we'll see where the book takes us when we actually read it. If I love me anything, it's a good romance with a prince of hell. Because I have to admit, I definitely read a lot of such Incubi, Incubi, um, Romances on Wattpad back in the day. Okay, bye. And those are all the books that I have got on my list for 2024, friends. The top 10 books I want to read this year. Let us hope that it happens. I feel like because the list is shorter, I think it's very realistic and I'm very capable of reading all these books. So, elevemos una oración al universo y a todo lo que creamos para que Melanie lea estos libros. I really hope that I get to all of them because they all sound so, so good and I feel like all of them would bring in a lot of entertainment to my 2024. So if you did enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up down below. Comment down below if you've also made a list of books to read this year. Do you have a yearly TBR? Are you winging it? Are you taking it daily? Are you taking it monthly? How are you planning your year in reading if you are doing so? Or if you're not, let me know all of that down in the comments. Have you read any of the books in this list? What is your list? Definitely share with the class if you want to. And if you reach the end of the video, let us leave a key emoji down in the comments for Throne of the Fallen. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already for more content like this. And there's always a Patreon linked down below in case you guys want to join it for extra content. It helps keep the channel afloat and alive. And it's a really great way to get even more one-on-one -on -one interaction. Get so many live shows, both book related and not a book club, a Discord server to connect with fellow readers. It is just an absolutely wonderful community that we have built over on Patreon. It is literally my pride and joy. I love it so much. And so if you'd like to join, that is always linked down below alongside all of my socials. I love you guys so, so much, and I will see you on the next one. Goodbye!